everyone, how's it going? Ross here on MGF Customs, back continuing my new tutorial series, how to make your own custom minifigures. This time, we're covering 3D pieces. Now, I've been waiting a while to do this tutorial. This is something that is incredibly practical and these methods are really useful and I use these in making pretty much every custom minifigure that I create. These are the techniques you use to make gauntlets, pouches, vests, adding definition to your custom minifigures, belts, any flat 3D accessory that falls under those categories. You'll be able to create them after watching this video. So I'm excited to get into this. This one I think is going to be pretty useful. So let's get started. Here's what you'll need. Starting out with shipping labels. A lot of people use electrical tape, but I'm more of a shipping labels guy. I think E-tape is a little bit too aggressive and I've always cut out bits of shipping labels for most of my 3D parts. A standard pair of scissors, an X-Acto blade. Make sure you're careful with all these tools. I learned the hard way. A pair of nail clippers and specifically this type. A set of push pins. You should have at least three around. A pack of sticky tack. Now these next few things are actually optional and depend entirely on what piece you're trying to create. A roll of heat adhesive, except we're not actually heating it up. I literally have just always used these to cut pieces off of. Then some Lego fabric. Unfortunately, when Lego acquired Bricklink, they pretty much destroyed Cape Madness's Bricklink store, and there haven't really been a whole lot of updates coming from him, and his website has not gone up all year. Apparently, he's been taking some simple orders directly via email, so I would highly recommend reaching out to him via that email and showing your support for Cape Madness, the best fabric maker this community has ever seen. I'll be using a Lego plant piece for a couple things today. And finally, and this one is not optional and very important, a bottle of brush on nail glue. Okay, so here we go. I've got a really great example for you guys today with the Mandalorian's belt, along with a little bit of work that I did on a Jedi character that you will see in just a short while. However, beginning here today, I am just simply taking a piece of the shipping labels and I have cut the Mandalorian spelt strap out of the shipping labels and cutting basic shapes out of paper is something that I think we've all been doing since we were little kids and that's really all you're doing here but obviously go slow make sure you're getting the shape right you don't want to mess up unnecessarily and it's all about trial and error until you get the exact shape that you're going for and always pay attention to the size if it needs to be the same size as like say another strap on the minifigure for example make sure you're keeping things consistent and always be intentional about everything you're doing throughout these processes and that certainly applies when you need to be as intentional as possible when you're applying the strap to the minifigure and you're selecting exactly how you want it to be positioned on the minifigure and once you have done so and you're certain that this is how you want it to permanently remain on the minifigure you can then hold it in place and in this case I'm trimming off the excess bits of the belt with the nail clippers now that that's done and we have the shape of the belt complete I'm taking the brush on glue leaving it out in the open upside down for a bit while I then take one of my push pins lift up that strap on one side while still holding it down and maintaining the position that I chose for it and then inserting glue behind it holding it down pressing it down into place and it's important you don't use too much glue on the back or when you glue anything in place when making custom Lego minifigures because if you do that glue is going to spread and it's going to become a bit of a mess surrounding what you just glued in place and you're gonna have to clean it up or else you're gonna have that shine shiny glue sheen where you otherwise don't want that exposed and so you just want to be intentional about how much glue you're putting back underneath there and under things you're gluing in place and while it is good to maintain a balance it's also good to have a solid amount of glue on edges and corners to really make sure that they stay in place the middle part of things that you're gluing in place like the middle of this belt for instance are not as big of a concern those areas aren't really going to go anywhere it's always generally the edges with stuff like this that you have to really be worried about. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't recording when I was cutting out the shape for the Mandalorian's main belt buckle, but essentially what I did was once again, just take a piece of a shipping label, use my X-Acto knife, and carefully, slowly, and precisely cut out the exact shape that I needed for that belt buckle while making sure it was the right size. Now we're putting that belt buckle in place though, and so we're bringing in one of those push pins, taking our brush on glue, applying it onto the belt very 
very carefully so that it doesn't bleed onto the rest of the minifigure that I've been working on and just attach the little tiny cut up label bit which is the belt buckle to just a small part of the push pin. We're going in and then carefully dropping it into place and now it's on there but I still have a few seconds to control exactly how I want it positioned so in these few seconds I'm making sure that it's exactly where I want it to be if I need to slide it over at all or adjust a corner or do anything like that with the push pin it has to be right now and so I'm doing that and making sure that it's okay pressing it in place and now the belt buckle is on there next Armando has this tiny little rectangular piece right next to his belt buckle so again same exact process but this time a tiny Tiny little rectangle and then I'm gluing that in place the same way as well. Next I've already taken the adhesive roll, cut out the shape for and glued in the little piece for the Mandalorian's pouch and you can see that back there. Now I've cut out a tiny little strip of the shipping label. I've put it in position because now I'm bringing in the nail clippers and then snipping right at the bottom without ruining the pouch that I've already glued on there and then removing it so I can snip away a little bit more and really perfect the length of this tiny little strip piece to then glue it in place. But in this particular instance, I didn't necessarily glue that tiny piece in place the traditional way. I went over it with glue, which I guess did glue it in place, but you get the idea. Slightly different technique here. Moving on, I've cut out the upper portion of this pouch and I really can't offer too many tips in the way of how you should necessarily cut out shapes from shipping labels or from e-tape or what have you. You really just kind of have to have the piece on like your pinky finger or whatever finger of your choosing and just try to hold it up to the light, go as slowly as you possibly can and just really be very intentional about every little cut, every little slice, and make sure you're getting the right shape and the right size, no matter how slow you have to go, but always be careful. Don't cut yourself with the scissors or any of these tools. It's definitely not worth it. Just please take your time when doing this kind of work. And now once again, because there doesn't need to be glue behind this piece, I'm just using the glue brush and going over it. Now for this brown canister the Mandalorian also has on his belt, I'm bringing in the plant piece and introducing yet again another method for how you can glue very specific pieces like this in place in these specific scenarios. So I'm chopping a section of that plant piece out and once I'm satisfied with the overall size of the piece I've created, I'm now going to take my push pin and then take a tiny bit of sticky tack, put that on the tip of the push pin, kind of use my fingers to roll it into a point and now take that tiny any little section of the plant piece, stick that on there, set that aside for a moment, take the glue brush, precisely and carefully put a sufficient amount of glue where I need this piece to go. Now lifting up my push pin with the sticky tack, holding the canister in place, and then going in, dropping it in there, and you have to be careful because the sticky tack can wiggle this around, it can jut it out of place. You have to make sure that once it's on there, you don't just aggressively pull away. When using the sticky tack method, you have to always bear in mind that the sticky tack may be stronger than the glue for a few moments and you have to be patient, maybe even make a second attempt, but always be very careful and watch how the piece is behaving with the glue and the sticky tack so you don't make a wrong move. But if the piece you just put on is starting to bond with the Lego part, then you can pull away only if you're sure it's safe, otherwise you're going to have to make another attempt. So I've got a couple more tinier, thinner canisters to apply right next to the one that I just did, but these need to be small. So I'm bringing in staples. These little bits are actually pieces of a staple that I'm snipping up with the clippers and with the X-Acto blade. And once I'm satisfied with the size of these tiny little bits of 
staples, I'm then doing the same thing with each one of these. Then when it dries, use the push pin to add a little bit more glue to reinforce on the sides and where you can, and then repeat. These are the basic processes for how you glue tiny accessories in place. For my last example of this tutorial, I'm going to continue the work that I've been doing throughout these tutorials on Satil Shahan from the Old Republic, one of my favorite Old Republic characters there are. And essentially what I'm going to try to do for this half custom of her in this video is try to add some definition to her torso. And I'll be honest, at first I brought in a hole puncher with some photo paper and I tried to create this whole piece that ran up and over the torso. And I was going to like use paint to specify exactly where I wanted to make the cut for the design. And I thought I was going to pull off this whole elaborate 3D piece that was just one piece, but it didn't work out because I quickly realized the sculpting work I did on this hair piece in that tutorial video already prevents me from doing any sort of accessory like this for this figure that blocks off the shoulder area. So then I was like, okay, well now I need to fix this. And so I needed to sand off any residue glue that that whole thing left behind on both sides of the torso and then take another piece of the shipping label, use my scissors to cut out the shape of a Lego minifigure torso. And sometimes what I like to do is take a little bit of paint and then go around the edge of the object. So I'm specifying exactly where I need to cut and exactly where I need to go with the scissors. And it doesn't always help. It certainly didn't help too much in this case, but I did try and then I wound up cutting off a giant corner that I didn't mean to. And thankfully I didn't need that corner and I was able to salvage this whole piece and precisely cut out the exact shape that I needed. And it wasn't exactly easy to do. Again, this is something that you just kind of have to do with practice cutting out very specific shapes like these with scissors, but I recommend employing the exacto blade when necessary. That always helps. So with that piece, I did the exact same strategy that I did with the belt. I lifted it up on both sides, put glue behind it, and then pressed it into place. I also took some Cape Madness fabric and did my best with the scissors to precisely cut out a similar shape to add additional definition to Satil Sean's torso. And then I glued it in place again using those exact same methods. And now we can go into some paint work. Here's the deal with shipping labels and especially shipping labels that have glue on them. You're creating rough surfaces here in a surefire way to smooth over these surfaces of the shipping labels of the glue, wherever you need to smooth is employ a bit of apple barrel gloss paint or folk art metallic paint, whatever can give you that thick glossy paint layer that smooths over these areas. You're going to want to make sure you apply that. And whenever you're trying to smooth over any area on a mini figure, you're going to want to use some gloss paint first before you go over it with the actual layer of the real color you want to use. And this is what I do on pretty much all of my 3D elements. And then, and only then with all of this done right, can you then paint all of these accessories and guys that is going to do it for this tutorial thank you so much for bearing with me as i sort of did my best to haphazardly explain all of this i know it definitely could have looked a little bit crazy at times with all of my unorthodox methods but all of these ridiculous methods they work for me and uh, if you have any better ideas i'm always open to any suggestions you might have down in the comments let me know if any of this is helping out the next tutorial that focuses on 3d elements like this will have a much bigger focus on fabric elements because I only really started to introduce them here and I can't wait to do that at some point. But this was primarily to create your own flat 3D accessories for custom Lego minifigures. And again, I really hope that this one has helped you. So with all of that, let's go ahead and finally wrap up this video. All right, everyone, there you go. That is going to do it for episode four of this series. I, I, I'm not really numbering this or like really categorizing it. I'm just, it's just number four at the moment, but I hope you enjoyed the whole tutorial. Thank you so much for sticking around for the whole thing. I know that one was definitely a little bit extensive too, but there was a lot of ground to cover and a lot of important things to include and mention and a lot of work went into this video. So if you did find it informative or if it did help you at all with your customizing process, I'd greatly appreciate it. If you could drop the video a like below because that's, that's good for the YouTube algorithm or whatever. Regardless, as always, you can find me 
over on my Patreon page posting all my progress for my custom minifigures as I work on them. Everything you saw in this video already went up over there before this video was posted here and my newer long form series where I go much more in depth on the making of various custom minifigures and different pieces that I otherwise don't really do here on the main channel during the shorter video. So that's all available if you'd like to consider supporting the channel that way. Otherwise, of course, you can always find me over on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and all those places where I'm posting all my digital Photoshop edits and some other really cool stuff that uh, everyone over there has always really enjoyed for a number of years. So I, I don't recommend it for no reason. If you clicked on this video, you'll, you'll probably find some of that stuff cool. So yeah, but I don't know what the next tutorial is gonna be. I haven't even thought about it, to be honest. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go, okay. <laughs> I gotta get back to work on The Mandalorian and figuring out my life. All right, bye guys. We're covering 3D pieces. <laughs> the, th the weird things you have to do as a YouTuber to create like a, a successful space for a transition. <sighs> All right, everyone, there you go. That's gonna do it for the second th numbers, man. It's the fourth one, four. All right, everyone, and there you go. That's gonna do it for tutorial episode four. <laughs> tutorial episode four. What does that mean? It's how to make custom minifigs, man. New tutorial series. Blah, 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 blah.